Who were these mysterious persecuted people called the Waldensians? Stay tuned. Welcome to Discover the Truth Exposé. As students in school, we learned of the Puritans who came to America to escape persecution as they sought religious freedom from the Anglican Church and its doctrines. Yet, as to Puritan doctrine itself, we knew little. While traveling many years ago in southwest Missouri, I passed a church with the name Waldensian Presbyterian Church. My interest was piqued because I had heard that the Waldenses were European vestiges of early New Testament believers who shared a lot of the same Bible truths. Who exactly were these people who suffered unspeakable persecution from kings and a church bent on wiping off the face of the planet those who stood against accepted church teachings? In his book, A History of Christianity, Kenneth Scott Latourette describes the Waldenses as, quote, a humble folk to flee persecution, they sought refuge in the valleys of the Italian Alps, where we would meet them again at the time of the Reformation. Now, the popular assumption is that Constantine's Christianity was the only worship existing from the third century up to the Protestant Reformation, but that's not so. There have always been men and women who kept the true faith of the apostles down to our day. These remnant believers had nothing for the religion of the day. There is a tradition stemming from the 12th century that the Waldenses remained true to Paul's apostolic faith. B.G. Wilkinson, on page 33 of his book, Our Authorized Bible, Vindicated, writes, The Reformers held that the Waldensian church was formed about 120 CE, from which date they passed down from father to son the teachings they received from the apostles. At any time in New Testament history, there were always those faithful to the teachings of Yahshua and the apostles. In Matthew 16, 18, we read, where Yahshua said, You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my assembly, and the gates of the grave shall not prevail against it. It was upon Peter's confession that Yahshua the Messiah was the Messiah, that the true assembly would be established by Yahshua and never die out. Protestant historians regarded the Waldenses as part of the early forerunners of the Reformation. Historical records show that the Waldenses were fervent observers of the Ten Commandments, who kept the holy, the seventh-day Sabbath, as well as the seven annual feasts. They came out strongly against Roman church doctrines centuries before the Protestant Reformation. Toward the latter portion of the 19th century, Dr. Samuel Kahn the chief rabbi of Budapest, Hungary, wrote, Of the Christian groups in Transylvania during this period, 1588 to 1623, there were those who restored the original true Christianity and that they accepted and practiced Jewish religious customs and statutes which the Old Testament prescribed and which original Christianity observed as binding and only later discarded. This from the book, The Sabbatarians in Transylvania, Their History, Literature, and Dogmatics. Dr. Kahn affirmed that original Christianity observed and practiced, as did the Waldenses, Jewish religious customs. He said that they had a Sabbath songbook, which he says consisted of 102 hymns, 44 for the Sabbath, 5 for the new moon, 11 for Passover and unleavened bread, 6 for the Feast of Weeks, six for tabernacles, three for New Year, one for atonement, and 26 for everyday purposes. These Walden Seas were obedient to the command in Ezekiel 46, verse 3, that said, Likewise, the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate before Yahweh in the Sabbaths and in the new moons. Offerings were commanded not just on the seventh day Sabbath and feast, but also on the new moons. I once asked a bookstore clerk for a copy of the Jew Jewish New Testament. She asked, how can there be such a book? The New Testament is for Christians. Jews don't belong in the New Testament. Well, where did she think Christianity came from? 
The early believers were virtually all Jews. Yahshua said of his own ministry in Matthew 15, 24, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. All or nearly all of the apostles were Jews, Luke being the only one in question. So the Waldenses celebrated the three main Old Testament feasts in order to obey the teaching and example of the Savior, Yahshua. They sanctified the Sabbath because it is the sign of his true believers. I asked myself, could the Waldenses be in league with the Puritans, who also came to America for religious freedom and to escape persecution? Yes, in fact, both were reformers and both opposed Roman church doctrines. Those who restored the correct apostolic faith were known as Unitarians, originally meaning one. They opposed the teaching of the Trinity and believed that only Yahweh is the supreme mighty one. It was the translations of the New Testament by Erasmus that further prompted those skilled in Greek and Latin to examine the premises on which Trinitarianism was established and found them lacking. Those scholars included Sir Isaac Newton, the genius scientist and yes, astute clergyman. In 1579, the Unitarians split into Sunday and Sabbath worshipers. The Sabbath branch was the more faithful to the truth in that they practiced adult baptism. They kept the Sabbaths and holy days, meaning Passover, unleavened bread, Pentecost, atonement, tabernacles, and the last great day, as well as the new moons. Their doctrines encompassed the physical millennium of thousand years at the beginning of which the Messiah Yahshua will return and gather the faithful. They used the biblical calendar based on the new moons. They taught two resurrections, one to eternal life at Yahshua's coming and another to judgment at the end of the millennium. They taught salvation by grace, but that biblical law still needed to be kept. They held that Yahweh calls a small number of people to the truth, while the world in general is blinded to it. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 7 says, Brethren, I write no new commandment unto you, but an old commandment which you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you have heard from the beginning. Man likes to water standards down and change them as time goes on. A recent survey found that 58% of young people believe that you can get eternal life from other religions. However, the word says otherwise. Without Yahshua, you have no salvation. We read in John chapter 3, verse 36. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of Elohim abides on him. Believeth is the Greek word pistuo, and means not just to believe, but to be persuaded of, to have trust in. James tells us that the devils also believe and tremble but they don't have faith in the Savior and are not persuaded by him. That's the difference. For the first time in our history, nearly half of Americans don't possess a biblical faith. This is fulfilling a prophecy in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Many churches today still acknowledge Pentecost or Feast of Weeks, one of the seven high holy days. Why don't they come clean and observe all of the holy days? Many also teach that Pentecost in Acts 2 was the start of the New Testament assembly. But Paul wrote, speaking of Moses in Acts chapter 7, verse 38, this is he that was in the assembly in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai and with the fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. Lively is the Greek zao and means living. Oracles, logion, means the utterances of Yahweh. Therefore, these living laws, these statutes and judgments that Moses got from Yahweh were given to us as well on this side of the resurrection. Paul says that means we still have Yahweh's laws and statutes to obey. To have the faith of the early apostles requires a hungering and thirsting after righteousness, according to Matthew 5, 6, a devotion to the word and putting a lot of blood, toil, tears, and sweat into it. That is what the early believers did as the Israel of Yahweh. That is the kind of faith today's worshipers must have, must believe, 
and put to worship as well. Thank you for watching Discover the Truth Exposé. Thank you for joining us today on our journey to discover the truth. Scripture today was read from the Restoration Study Bible. To order your copy of this beautiful Bible in leather, paperback, or composite, visit RestorationStudyBible.com or see our website at YRM.org, which is packed full of resources for the Bible enthusiast. Also visit Google Play or the App Store to download the YRM mobile app. Join with hundreds of others live every Sabbath at YRM.org forward slash live, YRM mobile, or Facebook live. A place to praise the holy names and leave the titles at the door. We thank you for watching today. Shalom, peace, and hallelujah. May the awesome name of Yahweh forever be praised. Amen.